ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the OC Pro League game number two. My name is TJ, my co-caster is I hold shift and we're into tension versus avant-garde. Uh, game one of this series, my prediction goes to tension based on their pure skill looking at their roster. Does that change for you? So, here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. As somebody that loves Grover, Avant-Garde ran him during the preseason, uh, dur sorry, during the um, qualifier tournament, and he dominated. So, I don't see any reason why it won't work out this time. I have, I have full faith. It's gonna work. Well, you say dimensions, let's talk about Ying. Dropping those clones absolutely everywhere. Nightfall's doing a great job supporting his team. Joey G will be playing a bit further back. Reigning in the damage, and there's first blood as he and the Fernando rack up the damage onto Tadashi. Navajo will grab Xenex with a nicely placed cannonball. And there's the point leaning towards avant garde as Nightfall and the rest of the team are pushed off. Yeah, but he's instantly melting. Joey G grabs the kill. The overtime's ticking down, and nobody looks like they're on place. Here's Snuggles sprinting on with a nice shield spin. Of course, Xanax will need to dash out. Nightfall's being chased. Sm no, Snuggle will fall, actually, to Fuzz. And that will be the objective capture. The 1 to nil in favour of Avant Garde. I'm, I'm going to look stupid if uh, Tension don't pick up their game. There are four cauterizes online. <laughs> There's no wrecker. It's all cauterized. So the double so, tank so is able shift. to just walk through and keep these shields up. I, I might have forgotten to turn on your mic. That's good. It's all right. You're fine now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm good yeah, at so this. interesting. I'll go ahead and restate it. The interesting thing is there are four cauterizes online no wreckers, and there are two huge shields up. And on the flip side, there's only there's really only one wrecker on board total, and that's interesting when you're considering how many shields are on right now. And the blind pick is one thing, but not itemizing and countering with their itemizations is a different. Yep, there's the Grover ultimate carrying his team a little bit further forward. Snuggle will be throwing in the hook, but he's not able to connect with anything, and indeed he'll fall almost very low. But look at Sock here, running so aggressive and then dropping an immortal. This allows the rest of the team to play up behind him. The heals will come out to keep him alive. The shield will protect his newly regained HP, and Snuggle will fall to the focus. Navajo grabs Nightfall, and there's the payload all the way through. Avant Garde with dominant play so far. Yeah, it's just a five-man death ball, and I think that's a lot of what we're seeing right now. And if Tension is able to understand that all of these big tanks, and really the whole team is just sticking together on you know the level plane, right at the first level of the capture point, they need to be able to utilize some verticality and kind of make the focus change. This death ball gets broken up, and you can got to get a couple picks. We're not seeing that yet so far, and all of these big bodies are just dominating the forefront of all these battles. No, tension, they should win this game. Based on the preseason results, they came in second in every preseason tournament. They looked like the solid second team, you know, a tier one team in the OC region. Avant Garde, they've just started playing Paladins. And they're running a Grover, which I hate to mention it, but he's not doing bad. He's doing a nice amount of healing. He hasn't died yet, and he's chipping in for the odd assist. That's absolutely the kind of play you want to see. Yeah, and here's the flanking maneuver by tanks like we were talking about. Try to break up this monotony of all five players. And now the point is not a safe area. For, they're just grouping up and putting shield after shield. And there's a good pull, and this could be a burst, but no, the barrage is going to counter. So we'll actually disperse some of that riot control happening in there. But still, no one really focused on the point quite yet, and no picks yet either. This engagement is extremely long. 
There's a nice grenade in from Tadashi, but two Immortals followed by a very nice play. Over on the Makoa, will allow the first kills to come through. Akbo and Joey G both grab one. Nightfall strikes back. False grabs Nightfall, though, and yet again, Snuggle Waffle all alone on the point and focus down. That Grover's chipping in, and that play is working out for Avant Garde. Yeah, and that was a really good sustain of just, again, kind of staggering your shields between the Fernando and the Makoa turtle shell. And then, of course, the constant rate of healing that Grover does provide if he's able to stay there, you know, relatively safely, plus the Ying. I mean, this is all about sustaining and taking, sustaining and taking. And so far, it's actually working out, to my surprise, simply because the damage is just not there for tension yet. Ah, oh, come on, Owen, he's just chasing people back. Look at this chip damage. As a Grover, he can just consistently do damage onto all of his opponents, and you can see that working out for them. Sock does grab Sir Dark Wolf, and it will be the overtime ticking down after it's been ticked in very barely by that Fernando over on tension. and Guard are up 3 to nil, and I'd say they're the expected underdogs of this series. Also picking up five Rejuvenate items. I have yet to see that card picked up anywhere else. And I guess it makes sense considering that your Grover is staying alive for so long and the Ying is staying alive for so long. Why not get the extra healing? And the Cauterizes are going to have to get a lot more full now. And it's, just, it's, it's tough. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because do you level up your Cauterize and try to counter this healing? Or do you try to get back to Wrecker? I mean, the decision making as far as what you do here is very tough. And that's kind of what this brings as a strong frontline, strong healing comp goes. It's just interesting to see how Joey G is the only one really doing the sustained damage. And he's been doing a great job of it. Now we're into a team fight now, Sir Dark Wolf will be holding the front line, there's the barrage raining and that could do incredible damage but it's being countered down instantly, Akmo with a very good use of that Grover ultimate, will the rat allow the rest of his team to begin pushing forward, Sox gonna be at half HP though, and it might actually unfold, finally Avant Garde, they're looking stressed as fast, their healer falls to a great hook and damage combo from Tadashi, Sox does grab Xenix and instant return and there's the barrage coming in, the immortal from Sir Dark Wolf will save the majority of his team as Nightfall will grab Sox and instant return and maybe, just maybe, Avant Garde, they're gonna be pressured out by tension this was the fight they had to win, and it does look like this will be the fight that they do win. Yeah, and again, if you're looking at compositional value for Avant-Garde, what do you do as tension to break that? Well, there's only, like I said, only one real sustainable damage dealer. If you get close to Grover, he does less damage. Just commit. Just go in there. Just just force the issue and get right in the face of uh, Avant-Garde. And tension did that this last defense, and it paid off for them as we're now under 45 seconds to finalize this last about 15 feet or so for this payload conversion. It's also worth talking about, uh, Tension, they actually have three smite casters on their roster. So, when you get to team fights, they should have an advantage, just in terms of coordination and knowing how video games should work. There's the barrage going in, Navajo will grab Xenix, Tadashi instantly strikes back, back. the Mako ultimate from Navajo, that might clear the way, Tadashi sprinting away, dodging a hook, and it will be Sir Dark Wolf actually able to lock it down the payload, though it's inching closer, Snuggle Waffle playing against Akma, that will be surely a kill going their way, but no, Akma grabs Nightfall, falls, grabs Tadashi, Sir Dark Wolf is so very low, Xenix grabbed two in return, but Sir Dark Wolf falls to Joey G, but there are the kills going through. Xenix will grab Joey G, and it's now a Makoa v Makoa Navo on top in terms of HP, but the respawn advantage is very heavily in favour of Tanashi and Nightfall, as they do get right into the fight, but Snuggle Waffle does need to worry about that tank play on the point. He needs to be there holding the line. There's the Makoa ultimate. Nightfall will grab Navo. Sock GG, he's so very low. This overtime's over, and this point defence is successful. I do not like use of the Ancient Rage there. While you have the respawn advantage now you're not going to have ancient rage up for a point that you absolutely have to capture questionable trigger call there as far as utilizing that ultimate when you already had the defensive advantage looking in the face of the payload and finally converting this is going to be a tough recapture here uh, you know for tension they need to make sure that again they're committing and the biggest thing is you need to be able to get in the face of that ying and in the face of that grover and not having ancient rage is going to be really detrimental to that cause yeah, I'm on guard. They finally are looking like they're under pressure. They look like they're being stalled, but you go into this next point, the only ultimate available on tension is Xenix's, which isn't terribly useful going into team fights. it's useful after team fights and cleaning up, but he's going to pop it immediately, giving his team a bit of a perspective on where everyone's playing, maybe they use that to go for flanks to play kind of cautiously, and he is indeed raining in the damage, melting those shields, but Sox will be quite happy to push out onto the point, and it's worth talking about, look at this flank play coming in, Sir Darkwolf Snugglewolf, they're already in the back lines grabbing kills, maybe they can grab Akbo, but no! 
Akbo, he's gonna pop his ultimate, that's a bit questionable. That wasn't in the middle of an ultimate in return, so he's just used it to keep himself alive. A bit of a great ultimate might backfire now as the first deal did go in favor of tension. They're doing some great zoning. The barrage will come and do a little bit of damage. No kills going that way, though, as Tadashi will waste it. Sir Darkwolf falling back, and the damage on the fuzz might be it. There's the immortal to almost save him, but no, Sir Darkwolf gets the kill. The barrage comes in. That clears the way. That allows a hook in return onto Snuggle Waffle. He's going to be able to get out, but the chase is in from Navo. He's actually going to be ganked by several players instantly, and his HP will melt. Tadashi trending evenly with that no vote for commit. that kill. Sonk yeah, GG in that over yeah, and this is one of those situations, the world one was, like you mentioned, used a little bit early, but on top of that, the Lucianary Rift was also triggered on the side of Avant-Garde, so there's no healing, and this is what I'm talking about, Tension needs to just commit, go in, focus on those healers, take them out of the fight, and then re-engage back on these tanks. You just can't sit there and focus them unless they overextend, like we saw uh, Snuffle Wuffle do. Snuggle Wuffle, rather. Well, there will be the Mako ultimate. The Ancient Rage from Navo does clear it out, and though we have 99% in favor of Nenshin, Tension, sorry, my god, Avant Garde, they're looking dominant now. Yeah, the retake was just really strong. Again, this is what you get out of having the ability to get your health back up so quickly. It's not, you know, it's not curtains here, though, for tension. They still have a chance to re-engage. You just have to make sure you're not tanking any access to the face, and you're able to get a good spot. But Nightfall falling early is going to be really detrimental. The tanks and the barrage coming in to try to separate this all out, but a counter barrage executed very nicely and safely from the side. Zenix has to get in here and do some damage. Well, there's Xanax dipping on out, but as the last player here falls, Tadashi will be coming around the corner, but he's so low on HP, he can't possibly hope to contribute. And that will be at game one of the uh, match between Tension and Avant-Garde going dominantly, I say, in favour of Avant-Garde. Tension showed signs of light there in that defence, but after that, uh, didn't really like it. Yeah, the biggest thing to take away there is you do show signs of life, and even though you did just kind of throw away most of that first map, you have a chance to come back and utilize, if you face this comp again, a, a similar strategy that was starting to work near the end. And a lot of that comes from just committing, going as a team, avoiding these tanks, and getting into that soul damage dealer and that squishy healer in both the Victor and the Ying, respectively, played by Joey G and Fuzz. That's the key right there as far as, as the tension moves forward against this kind of a composition. So what do, what do Amon Guard do? Right, from here, presumably there's a counter. Presumably tension respond... What do avant-garde need to do to continue locking this down? Because we know tension will respond. They were consistently, actually, in the uh, qualifying tournament I casted, they were really, really good at coming back game two. They'd lose game one close, and then they'd figure out sure. what they needed to change, and they'd make those adjustments, and I loved them for that. So what do avant-garde do to maintain that? You know, it's one of those things like you, if you ever watch fighting games, yeah, round one is all information. Round two and three is the actual fight. If that's the way you want to treat it, then great. The thing you, you know, you don't want to get too crazy if you're avant-garde. You played this composition rather well, considering the fact that this is something that, as casting-wise, I have yet to really see anyone really dedicate themselves towards this double tank, double hero composition. You, and you have some space to work with. So if you want to go and try doing the same thing again to see if they're able to repulse that back and send it back their way, you know, with the salty run back, then, then sure. But you have that ability. But you can also try to find some other niche pick that will allow you to completely overextend a different form of the game than you have previously seen. And that might lead you into a spot where you can take game too easy. Well, we're going to be right back with that game two in just a few moments. Game two of the game, game two of the series two. Is that the word we're saying? Because game two of game two sounds a bit awkward. Well, game two of series two of the OC Pro League coming your way in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere as tension. Need to find a way back into this game. 